Okay, we'll do that later. Let's do question 2.5. So we've got... I've got some chat, really. So we've got a rod, uh, which is a length 500 millimeters, cross section area 60 millimeters. It's made of uh, elastoplastic material. So that could be like mild steel. It's not actually a plastic. Um, and it has got a Young's modulus of 200 gigapascals. It has a yield stress of 300 megapascals. The rod is subjected to an axial force until it comes stretched to 7 millimeters and the load is removed. What is the resulting permanent set? So, this kind of material, what we've got is basically a simplified stress drain plot. So, if you see that term, Elastoplastic. You're gonna uh, pretend that your nice stress drain plot becomes something that looks like this: nice straight line and then flat. Okay, so that's a not a bad model. This is obviously going to be your yield stress. And so this is uh, what we're going to do for stress strain. Okay. Uh, Rightio. So the first thing I'm going to do is work out what the yield stress is, or how do I have it? Right, yeah, so we've got the yield stress, so I don't need to work out the yield stress. I need to work out on my of this kind of triangle shape what is the extension when we get to that yield stress. Right, so let's work out what that is. So here all we're doing is Young's modulus is stress over strain. Notice that's going to be valid in this region. We're assuming a, a linear increase. So rearrange this, becomes strain is stress over Young's modulus. Right. And we've been told what the yield stress is. Yeah, so that's 300 megapascals. So 300 times 10 to the 6 divided by 200 gigapascals okie dokie so that then gives me uh, 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 on the whole in structural analysis if you're not getting like 1 times 10 to the minus 4s up to 1 times 10 to the minus 2s you're probably doing something wrong so that's my strain up to that point now what ca else can I say? Uh, I can have a look and say where have I actually gone? So I have stretched at 7 millimeters and what is the um, uh, to it doesn't say anywhere particular rates. so I'll call this, I don't know Um, to some X position. So I've stretched it out here. What's the equivalent strain to my, my stretch? Well, to work that out, I will then do that strain is the change in length divided by length, or the extension. Uh, my extension is 7 millimeters. My original length is 500. So 7 over 500 
Actually, I don't know where I am, but okay. We've assumed that we've deformed it. So we've assumed that we're on this side. 7 divided by 500. Right, so 14 times 10 to the minus 3. Yeah, so we've definitely gone past that location. Right, so we've uh, stretched it out and we're now here. So what do I want to do next? Well, I suppose I want to work out what this length, well, or at least what this extension is going to be. When I remove my load, I'm going to try and drop back, but what will happen is because I've permanently deformed it, so it's actually going to drop back down a curve that's parallel to that curve there. Okay, so let's work out what this distance is from here to here. Uh, I call that, I don't know, D difference. Okay, so that's the 14 times 10 to the minus 3. Take away 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3. 12.5 times 10 to the minus 3. So now we're, we're here. So simply make the assumption that we can then uh, reuse this equation to find out what the permanent damage is when we've released the load. So that will therefore be that uh, the change in length is the extension times the length. So we've permanently shifted it by 12.5 times 10 to the minus 3. Uh, I could work in millimeters, put a 500 there, make sure I know that I'm working in millimeters, multiply that through uh, 12.5. 5 times 10 to the minus 3 times 500 equals 6.25 millimeters. Okie dokie. So that's job done. Uh, now let's go and play the uke.